Welcome back to Studio 701. Now our next guest is here to talk about a very serious but important message. Anita Valasia is a therapist with Dakota Children's Advocacy Center. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Now before we talk about the new hotline number, which we do want to let people know about, we'd like to ask you just kind of about what you do at the Dakota Children's Advocacy Center and what got you into this industry. Yeah, so I am one of the therapists at the Dakota Children's Advocacy Center. Um, I think going back to like when I took my first psychology class in high school, I knew that I wanted to do something around that field and that I wanted to work with kids. So that's kind of how I got to this role. And there's a way we can all help children in need, and that's by knowing a new uh, statewide child abuse and neglect reporting line. What can you tell us about this line and how could it make a difference? Yeah, so they actually launched on January 4th. Um, so right now in times of crisis, um, child abuse reports um, might have been going down, but that doesn't necessarily mean that child abuse isn't happening. So they kind of released this toll-free hotline where anyone can make a report. Um, if it's an emergency, you have to um, reach out to 911. If it's a non-emergency, non reach out to this number. Um, yeah. I'm kind of assuming that's because, um, you know, more people are home or staying at home with their families and uh, kids aren't going to school as much, um, things like that. Um, but we, I'm sure, will be studying the impacts of what it's been like living through a pandemic for many years to come. So um, what can you tell us about child abuse and neglect related to um, this most recent pandemic, which maybe there's some good news and that the numbers aren't as high right now? Yeah, so kind of like you said, right, kiddos aren't going to school full time. Um, they're spending a lot of time at home. Um, they might not be part of their general activities and clubs, so they might not be around a lot of adults. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard, right? We got to look out for those um, things that, those signs of maybe f that there is abuse, right? So the time of COVID um, has been hard and, and we have seen less um, reports being made. Well, hopefully the pandemic will be behind us soon enough. So in a crisis or, or not, uh, what are some warning signs that parents and loved ones should be looking out for? Yeah, so warning signs like an unexplained injury or a bruise, um, poor hygiene, right? So maybe wearing the same clothes a couple days in a row or not showering, um, decline in school, act in, in school performance, right? So kind of a variation of grades. Um, maybe them being guarded and keeping to themselves, not really, they're withdrawing from their usual friends or um, activities that they are involved with. Um, maybe engaging in some inappropriate sexual behavior and talk, um, things like that. Hearing those, you know, things to look out for, it's just heartbreaking as a parent. Um, but if, who, who should call if they're worried? Are we talking like someone within the family, a neighbor, you know, who's, who is supposed to make these calls? Right, so actually anyone can make a call to make a report. Um, my role as a therapist, I am a mandated reporter, so it's like a teacher, like the school counselors, those people are mandated reporters. Um, but someone just like you could call into this toll-free number and make a report. Okay, good to know. And, you know, overall, if anyone does have questions, um, we do want to make sure that you go to the website on your screen to learn more about how to report. Um, as Anita mentioned, call 911 if it's an emergency. And there is the statewide reporting line. I had one more question, which is, are you able to see people in person right now? Are you still doing it kind of via Zoom? And how is that going? Yeah, so I am seeing um, a couple kiddos in person at the office right now. And then a majority of my caseload is to over telehealth. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that um, I'm not seeing kiddos in, in the office. We're slow to, slowly transitioning back into the office. Okay. Well, thank you so much for all that you do um, for children. Thank yes, you. Thanks, Anita. We appreciate you being here. Thanks. All right, coming up next, whether you're a handyman or not, um, there are some things you want